What the Fed? The Fed? I watch the Fed. I the Fed man. Mama, watch him. Oh. Oh. So this is Greatstone Beach, as you can see. Sand dunes. Another fantastic day. Here's the beach. It's shallow, safe, great for kids, great for families, and you can see beautiful summer's day in August, and this is how it looks uh, on a nice day in the summer. But on Sunday, Sunday just gone, the 9th of August, this was a very, very different scene indeed. A, a restaurant business in South London had advertised, you know, a big beach party with food. They tried to go to Camber Sands further along the coast, which is a very well-known beach spot, tens of thousands go almost every day when it's lovely. Camber found out about it and said, no, it's not on. So they transferred to what they called a secret location, put the postcode out quite late, um, and then upon this place descended, not just coach loads who'd paid money to this company to come along and have a beach party, but thousands and thousands of people. And what I'm told by local residents is during the afternoon, and no one quite knows, but 3,000 people sounds a reasonable estimate, some think it could have been as high as 5,000. Obviously, no social distancing of any kind being observed whatsoever, but people say, with the music, uh, with uh, you know, families, people of all ages, that actually, although it was completely overwhelming for a small community, that actually, the atmosphere wasn't too bad. Then at about six o'clock, as the, as the families of younger kids start to leave, then down from London start to come a lot more people. A lot of flashy motor cars, we've got pictures of Lamborghinis and the most expensive Mercedes. Uh, and then what happened over the course of the next five hours uh, is something that I am simply astonished is not being told in our national media whatsoever. What happened in this little seaside town of Greatstone on Sunday evening is complete total and utter lawlessness and what we're going to do is find out from residents exactly what they experienced on Sunday and the big question in my mind is why why would something as appalling as went on here not be part of our national news agenda is it because is it because we just accept now that law and order's gone is it because we're too terrified to criticise one community because the excuse given for the party was that it was Jamaican Independence Day. You know, what is happening to our country? What is happening to our media? Uh, why, why is it me that has to come along and try and report this and get it out to a big audience? So this is part three of Nigel Farage Investigates. Over the last six months, I've been going out making films. We make films, we cut them, we clip them. We started off out there doing the channel migrant stuff when nobody would even cover it. Uh, we got millions of people watching our stuff and now of course they're all covering it. But it's all kind of, there was a beach party, it went a little bit wrong because people... I'm a little bit annoyed with the one yesterday. I know, well, I'll see what I can find in greats then. Well I'm sitting here with the local council, David Wimble, and he has been quite extensively quoted in by the South East media particularly. But one of the things that fascinates me is National media aren't covering this story, so it's a bit difficult to find out what really, you know, for the public as a whole, what really happened here on Sunday. And interestingly, David, I've been going around talking to, you know, some of your constituents here, and people are genuinely scared to speak. Genuinely happy to come and talk face to face. And all I want is for the public to know what actually happened here on Sunday. On Sunday, it was a very hot day, similar to today. Um, I live literally just a few doors down up the coast there. And the beaches and the car parks were full by nine o'clock. Um, by 12 o'clock, more and more cars were parking on the main road here, uh, double parking. So there was, um, you know, on the pavement as well as on the double yellow lines. By three o'clock, minibuses started turning up. Where I live has got private parking. I couldn't get in there because there was uh, minibuses parked in the car parking spaces. And by about 5.30, literally the whole roads were gridlocked. But the evening, things turned a little bit different, didn't they? Well, I came back down here about 8.30 in my car. It was five minutes to do half an hour because there was literally people in the street. Uh, there was a strong smell of uh, cannabis. 
Um, afterwards, we found loads and loads of nitrous oxide yeah. um, cylinders, uh, and it, it just was getting more like a, almost like a mini riot. Uh, as you say, <laughs> early on during the day, there was lots of people on the beach. There was music being played. <laughs> I believe the police stopped that fairly early on by five o'clock. Um, they were told specifically that there could be no amplified music. You know, if, in order to hold any event down here, you need a, a temporary entertainment license. None of that was yeah. applied for. So, for all intents and purposes, it was an illegal party. Um, you can't have social gatherings of more than 30 people, as you know. <laughs> and uh, this really did exceed that. And uh, people were being abused. People were being sworn at. Um, the next day, I mean, it was like a war zone. Yeah, this is all good. It's too much in him up, you. Yeah, yeah. And I, I heard reports sort of around the pub here and everything, of sort of just street brawls, um, big punch-ups going on, uh, police officers arriving in sort of riot gear, and four police officers getting injured. One more clock! One defend, defend! I was defend! I defend, man! I've seen the videos of the policemen being hit by the car um, and I understand some other people were being um, you know, attacked in the car park as well. Oh, I don't wrap my thing, you know. Oh, 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 oh my God. That is so much. Yeah, no, I mean, it sounds, as I say, from what I can make out, between sort of 9 and 11 o'clock, it was just horrendous down here, and people locked in their houses and terrified. And all of this violence, all of these drugs, all of the things that were going on, assaults, one arrest I'm hearing. Uh, I'm hearing the same <coughs> thing. It's the same person who um, got into the altercation in the car park where three of the policemen were hurt. Well, it feels to me it's a bit like lawless Britain. I wouldn't say it's lawless Britain. I would say the police were... <laughs> between a rock and a hard place. Um, some of the police were asking people to get off the road. No, for what reason, blood? No, no, no. Uh, when I was driving through, um, they were shouting out Black Lives Matter. Oh, as yeah. if that's the, the Joker card that, you know, if you say anything to anybody, uh, they're being racist. Um, I don't think that's the case at all. I think if they'd gone in heavy handed, it would probably been worse. I think they were just trying to keep the peace, as it were, and then just trying to let it fizzle out. But when they did tell them at nine o'clock that, you know, you've had your fun, you've had what you came mm. down here for, go, mm. Mm. Um, that's when it all kicked off. Yeah, OK, thank you. Well, we've had a proper account there uh, from somebody who saw much of it. And I have to say, I think what happened here is pretty disturbing. Something extraordinary happened here, something that 10 years ago would have been on the front page of every national newspaper, a breakdown of law and order in an extraordinary way. And yet, right now in this country, mainstream media just will not cover these stories. And I think it's very interesting, wasn't it, the comment about Black Lives Matter as if that is the get-out-of-jail card. We just say, oh, well, you're simply discriminating against us. And actually, if this country is going to be a success, we've got to treat everybody equally. Regardless of skin colour, we've got to be equal before the law. Uh, and I just hope that as a result of my trip down here, a lot more of you start to ask questions about what is going on in our country, what is happening to law and order, what is happening with our police forces, and what is happening with our media, simply not reporting it. So there's no doubt that all the video footage, all the phone calls that I got on Sunday about what was happening at Greatstone were true. Uh, you know, what started as a beach party, uh, albeit one with no social distancing, albeit one with, and who knows, was it 3,000 people, was it 4,000 people? I just don't know the answer to that. But with a huge number of people, as the evening continued, as alcohol was consumed in vast quantities, drugs in equally huge quantities were consumed, the behaviour turned and it basically became a riot uh, with four police vans who couldn't cope, four police officers injured, uh, debris, mess, litter, uh, some appalling behaviour, uh, people utterly lawless and yet only one arrest. Uh, and I just wonder why a little seaside town being taken over in this way, this kind of behaviour has not made more news. Is it because we're simply becoming a lawless society and no one cares or is it because the media have frankly become too scared to report on stories like this? I don't know. 
I spent 25 years campaigning for Brexit. I thought the country being free was the most important thing. I'm now beginning to think that actually law and order and the shape of our society is an even bigger problem. And that's why I've covered this story. And I'm going to go on covering stories like this. And if you have heard of incidents of lawlessness uh, where somehow the police have virtually given up, where people are allowed to behave with absolute wanton disregard for the rules, for the law, for community, for human decency, let me know, because I'm going to go on covering this story.